Good morning. Today, you and I are going to talk about Scala and Java. How fun is that going to be? I'm pretty excited. So, Scala is a language that I have been working with for a few months now, professionally, at my new job. And I have based most of my, like, start, the start of my career on Java. I started as a Java pro programmer at the university, did a fair bit of Java programming at my job, at, uh, like, my, my, like the, the resulting job I got after that. And I've been involved in Java on and off for the past two years now as well. I'm not, you know, a die-hard Java programmer, but it's a nostalgic language that I, you know, I love. I always come back to it, and I do a fair bit of Android programming as well. So it's always been around, right? And when we compare these two languages, I want to start off by talking about the things that I really like about them, because I'm one of those people who like to think that everybody has something to teach, and every programming language has something about it that makes it a nice experience or something that it does very well. So let's start off with just Scala. Let's start with yeah, let's start with Scala. So what do I like about Scala? Well, apart from it being based on the Java GVM, you know, we have a great deal of stability and in in, in heritage virtually in the language, which I think is it's really great when you want to build something that is a little bit fancier. We're actually, or rather, that has a lot of complexity added to it. And the product that we're building actually has a surprising amount of complexity. It's actually, right now, one of the most technical, technically challenging projects, the thing we're working on right now. It is really tricky. It's really exciting and engaging, but it's actually the first time in my career where I have to face a challenge which I don't actually know how well we're going to be able to, to, to deliver. It's this, we have the sort of problem where we really, really need to leverage high performance. Like the, there's going to be a massive amount of resources going into the computation of an algorithm. The problem is really small. It's virtually trying to figure out uh, getting semantics from bank transactions and payments and figuring out what each of them represent. How, what, what's a subscription, what's a, you know, a single payment to a certain, a certain vendor or like a shop or so forth. And it's surprisingly difficult to figure this out from the little data that is provided to us. So what's gonna happen is that we're gonna have a large data set of different transactions. And what's beautiful about this is that I've actually faced this problem before which is I, ha I wrote uh, back like a few, a few years ago, I had a, we basically we had a lot of legacy at my previous job at Ticketmaster, a lot of SaaS issues basically. And so we had such a large code base that there was no way for us to kind of clean things up because SaaS is one of those things that it's a little bit tricky. You don't want to just touch things like CSS is, you know, as you know, and, and we all love globally scoped. So we're removing a single class or a single ID or something like that can break your entire layout in unforeseeable ways. So I wrote a little library or a little tool called Sassy Stats that would basically parse all the SAS files statically and p provide a small little like stats output in the in the terminal saying that okay you have this amount of references to to the uh, to these classes and like and these uh, mixins and variables and stuff like that. So it gave you a little bit of an understanding of what you could remove and what you could keep. And the th reason why I mentioned this is because the way that that was structured was that it parsed all of the different, the, it parsed the AST as a stream and every chunk of information that came in was like an, was a file that represented an object structure that then was parsed into basically an array of different rules that, we, that I could then count and provide the stats for it. So why is this important? Well, I think about having a large data set like that, a big array of data that you need to process and get something semantic out from as just a stream or a pipe of events that need to happen. And Scala does that so well. 
mapping, flat mapping, like functional programming, the idea of having a pipeline of events that take place in order to take one array or one set of data and turn it into another set of data. That functional mentality is baked into Scala and it does it extremely well. So that's one of my absolute favorite parts about Scala. And futures are very nice as well. Optionals are really great and so forth. There's a lot of good stuff there. And then we have Java, which I absolutely, I, I, it's, it's so hard for me to be objective on this one because, you know, I have all these fond memories from school and like I had such a great time learning it and I had such a great time working with it. And there was bad times as well. I, I, there are things about Java I absolutely despise. Even to this day, I feel very frustrated whenever I need to set up a Java pro, pro, a project from scratch because it's such a, well, when you ha if you compare the experience of setting up a project in Java to, an, to the experience in, you know, JavaScript or something like that, you very quickly, well, maybe I am a little bit spoiled because this is the way it used to work. It's, uh, or maybe I'm just doing it wrong, I don't know. I somehow I always feel like I have an issue trying to set up my environment. I don't know why. Anyway, what's great about Java, which I absolutely love, is that you have this massive, massive, massive language that runs on like a billion devices or something like that, I think. And it has all this heritage and it's, a, it's trusted in the industry. It's always a solid choice. I mean, no, nobody's ever going to second guess you if you go with Java or rather very few people because it's, it's almost reached a maturity that I think very few programming languages can even can claim to have and b because if you if you tell a reserved organization such as a bank or something like that that hey we want to do this in node.js their technical officers may be a little bit ah, ah, huh? if you say java they kind of go oh yeah sure no problem at all like that trust very few other language very few languages have and it's earned i think it's very well earned I argue that, I, or rather what I would like to see is that Elixir reaches that type of trust because I really, really do think that Erlang and so forth has the potential to kind of challenge that trust, I would like to think, but Java is pretty, is pretty sweet as well. And one of the things that I really like about it is that a lot of the criticisms that like object-oriented programming gets, which which is well found, and I think that that's the reason why functional gets so popular. It's uh, it's absolutely an issue, but I think that when you do it right, oh, and that's that's a very, I'm sorry, like it's not like I'm trying to say that everybody does it wrong. It's more that I've seen so many great engineers with a great great tech talks from the Java community who can really show me, really make me believe that this is possible. You know, it's possible to make a really nice project the object-oriented way, and it is possible to... And actually, one of my favorite talks is, it's a talk about how we are addicted to, to, uh, uh, to native values or to like base values, like basic integers and so forth, and the types actually, and creating objects and, you know, your own custom classes, around uh, like an integer or something like that, it's actually truly powerful. It, it's, uh, and that is true. Uh, uh, working with Scala and Java has basically made me addicted to types. I used to think I didn't need them, and now I, can't, I, don't, I don't know how I made it without them. I, it's, just, it's just amazing to have types. So, which one would I say is better than the other in a, in a given situation? See, the thing is with Scala, is that I think that Scala does, has made a little bit of a trade. That's what I feel anyway. The thing I love about Java is, you know, it's upfront about its types. It's, uh, it's very easy to get started. It's very easy to build stuff in it. There are, and I think that Scala has kind of, has taken the functional aspect of Java and made that part re very well. But it has also done a lot of things not so well like implicit values i don't like implicit values and it has 
I am like inferred types and stuff like that. Actually, I'm one of those people. I don't really like inferred types. I'm sorry. Maybe you'll kill me for that. But I, I actually want to see what the return is. I want to do. I want to declare every variable with its type because it becomes very. To me, it becomes very readable. It becomes much easier for me to get what's going, like what's happening in this function. So. There are a few things with Scala that I'm not, not a big fan of. So when would you use one over the other? Well, I would say that I would use Java if you don't like it. Or rather, I would say I would use Scala like, because they're so similar and you can do so well in both of them. I would say that the thing that Scala does really well is a synchronous programming, thread-based programming. So Scala on paper, and probably a lot more, pe much more experienced people than me can vouch for this, that the performance you can gain from Scala is going to be higher than Java, for the most part. Uh, that's at least what a lot of job interviews I've uh, seen when it comes to Scala. Like, you know, people want to improve their performance in a Java-based environment, so they go over to Scala, and they're interchangeable pretty much. So. There's a lot of stuff going in there, so it's. Uh, I think that you should go with Scala, if you have such a use case as what I'm. I was describing earlier. You have a lot of data processing going on. You're gonna churn a lot of numbers, a lot of data transactions, or something like that. You're, you're building something of that nature. It's about basically pro streaming a lot of data into your system and mu use, doing it, uh, using it for something useful. Which is the case for APIs and stuff like that, transactions, all that kind of, kind of stuff. For me and my colleagues, the use case is bank transactions, like getting a lot of data and like making something useful out of that data. So I think Scala is really great for processing large quantities of data. And I would use Java for, for most other things, because Java, in my opinion, it's a little bit easier to be productive in, and you don't have to, like, the, the learning curve isn't as high. But maybe I'll feel differently after my first year of working with Scala. But that's how I feel right now, anyway. <laughs>